Do you want to make your nursing career happen? Or do you want it just to happen to you? Let's talk about conscious career building right here on episode 296 of The Nurse Keith Show. Hey there, this is Nurse Keith. In these days of the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm still disseminating as much high quality, evidence-based information and expert opinion as I can in my monthly COVID-19 update episodes. Meanwhile, I still wanna support you by discussing issues that are salient to your personal and professional development. I love having you along for the ride, whether you're new to the show or you've been on this journey with me for months or maybe even years. Thanks for being part of the growing Nurse Keith Nation. This podcast is about you, your nursing and healthcare career, and healthcare writ large. And I'm here to share education, ideas, diatribes, and informative interviews with some of the most inspiring people from the worlds of healthcare, nursing, entrepreneurship, healing, medicine, and beyond. And did you know that Nurse Keith Coaching is your one-stop shop for all things related to your career? That's right, I offer individualized coaching for nurses and healthcare professionals around the world. And if you mention you're a listener, you get 10% off your first coaching package. So email me today at keith at nursekeith.com to schedule a chat. The show notes for this episode will be at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 296. And no, there is no guest today. You are stuck with me for one of my Nurse Keith diatribes, to which you are probably all too familiar, or with which you are probably all too familiar. So this is me with you right here on the mic. So just hang back, sit back, put your feet up, make a cup of coffee or whatever you happen to be doing, and thanks for being here. You know, too, too, too many nurses who I speak with have allowed their careers to just happen to them rather than making them happen. I know we get complacent, we get tired, we get burned out, we get distracted. I totally get it. I've been there myself. We have children, we have aging parents, we have financial concerns, marital and relationship issues to tackle, and all manner of things to think about in an increasingly complex world. And we also have things to deal with like fractious elections and political campaigns, social unrest, and real live existential threats like, let's say, uh, pandemics and climate change. So however, no matter what's going on in the outer world and what's going on inside, We can't lose sight of what we need for ourselves in order to be satisfied, healthy professionals who have careers imbued with meaning and purpose. We all want to feel that our work has meaning and purpose, right? None of us want to feel unhappy at work. We don't sign up for that, but it often happens. And I just hear from so many nurses and others who are in that place of distress or duress. One of the issues I find is pretty common that I hear from people about relatively often, and this is not a judgment, it's just an observation. I've heard from so many nurses over the years who've taken 10, 12, 15, or as many as 18 or 19 years off from working in order to raise their children. And don't get me wrong, raising kids is an awesome responsibility, and it's a gift to our society and the world at large. After all, those kids are our future, aren't they? But what happens when you need to go back to work and you've been out of the workplace for 18 years? I've seen it. I've seen how hard it is. How do you reconstitute a career that's behind the times? You know, you don't just add water and shake and it's all better. There's a lot to catch up on. The market's changed. The application process has changed greatly. Technology has moved on and changed. Clinical practice has evolved and changed. So if you need to take time off for whatever reason, your family member, hopefully this never happens to you, but it happens to so many of us, your family member is sick 
or dying on hospice or has some sort of catastrophe in their lives or your lives and or the life of your family and you need to take some time off or whatever it happens to be. But do yourself a favor. If you yourself are not disabled and you are able to get out there and work on some level in some capacity, do the bare, bare minimum. Take a per diem position and do a shift here and there so that your resume has something on it for that period of time you're off. Look, even if you work one shift a month over a period of five years on your resume, it can say that you worked at that organization for five years. You can just say per diem nurse, per diem clinical social worker, and that fills some of the gap there on your resume. Also, if you're taking time off, do some volunteer work, get out in your community. It looks good on a relatively scant resume. And it also gives you a chance to meet people, to network, to lend a hand in your community, keep your hand in the game to some extent, especially if it's volunteerism somehow related to healthcare, wellness, or public health, for instance. So get out there and do some volunteer work, do some per diem work, do yourself a favor because I have seen this oh so much and we definitely need to keep our eyes on the prize and realize that we might have to go back to work someday. And children do grow up, they become more independent. And if you've been off for four, five, six years, get yourself out there. Now, moving on to another related topic. I've been digging back through some of my more popular blog posts. And while I haven't written one about that issue of taking, you know, 18 years off from your career, I've written a lot of blog posts over the years. And I want to just touch on a couple things that jumped out to me during this review of Digital Doorway and all the content I've been putting out there over these last, well, 15 years, but I was looking at some more recent blog posts. One was this issue of making a choice. And again, this episode is overall about making your career happen. And a lot of us make choices in our careers and our lives because someone has told us that we should do that. You should get married. You should move to the city. You should move to the suburbs. You should have 2.5 children. When people are shooting all over you, it's time to think, well, why are they telling me I should do this? Is it really wise? Is this part of the larger zeitgeist that they're tuning me into? Or are they just sharing some kind of fear with me? And do I need to actually pay heed to their fear? Or are they feeding into a stereotype. I've told the story before of how, you know, nursing schools generally push acute care. And yes, it's very important for most nurses to get out there, work in an acute care hospital or some large medical center to get those med surge skills and the things that you really need to know to do and to get that grounding in those types of skills and that level of expertise. When I graduated, I made the choice not to do that and to go right into the community. And yeah, I was told it was professional suicide and that I shouldn't do that and I should do this, but I'm kind of an iconoclast and a rebel and I just did it my own way. Now, I have never been unemployed unless I chose to be for a period of time and it was not professional suicide. And I'm not telling you if you're a new grad that you should not work in a hospital. You do what you want to do. We all have to follow the beat of our drum. Sometimes, yes, popular opinion counts. Sometimes there are things that would be prudent to do, but sometimes we also are the type of person or in a situation or position where we need to go against the norm. I just happen to be the kind of person who often does that, for better or worse, and I'm still here. So when you're thinking about it, in terms of what you want out of your career, whether you're a new nurse, whether you're a new social worker, whether you've been 
working in clinical practice as a as a clinical nurse educator or whatever you happen to be doing what's your nursing everest you know what are you really looking at and where are you really wanting to go because when we evaluate our short term and our long term and even our midterm goals like just a few years what is it that we really want So if you look back and you do a little bit of a self-assessment to help you make the next choice, how and why did you make certain choices? Like I just described my choice of not going into med surge and acute care after graduating. Did you take that job out of school because everyone said you were supposed to, or was it because in the fiber of your being, you knew it was the right thing? Did you perhaps, or are you right now, tolerating workplace bullying because you don't think or didn't think that you had another choice but to tolerate it? Has your modus operandi been to accept imperfect positions out of fear of not being offered anything better? Did you avoid going back to school because you heard some colleagues complaining how, oh, some nurse on our unit pursued her MSN and she thought she was better than everybody. So that made you think, oh boy, I'd better not go back to school because people are going to actually think I'm, you know, trying to make myself better than them or something. Or are you in the wrong specialty? Are you working with the wrong patient population? Or is the patient population who used to light your fire, not lighting your fire anymore? Are you burnt out on them? And do you need to move on to something else? Or Have you been a clinician for quite some time? And would you prefer to be in a, let's say, completely non-clinical role? Would you like to start your own business? Would you like to go into medical sales? Do you need to remove yourself from the clinical milieu altogether? I'm going to have links to some of these blog posts that I'm referencing here because we need to think innovatively. We need to keep our personal Everest in mind, even though we can't always make it there right away. We have to keep our eyes on some prize. And I once wrote a blog post about this notion of mission drift during the course of your career. And this is when your career has gone off course and you need to identify where things went wrong. And this isn't always an easy thing to do, but it can be done with professional help, like myself, for instance, or without professional help because You need to unpack the state of your career, acknowledge what you've done, acknowledge what maybe hasn't worked, and acknowledge what has worked and where you are and where you want to be. So if you've made choices strictly for money, has that really worked for you? Have you made choices influenced by, let's say, a family legacy of everybody's been a nurse, so you became a nurse, or everyone's a physician, so you went to medical school? Did you choose nursing or whatever it is you do based on an experience that inspired you? I've spoken to so many people who went into medicine or nursing or social work or psychology or counseling because they had an amazing experience as a patient, as a client, and they thought, wow, I would really like to do this too. Have you chosen your current career choice because you felt it would offer flexibility a decent living, a varied career where you could do lots of different things. So once you can go back, dig deep, unpack it, and remember why nursing or whatever it is you do seemed right at the time you made that choice, look at the arc of your career from then until now. What are the things that impacted your decision-making along the way? Did you change specialties somewhere? Was that a wise choice? And if you did change course at any time, what prompted the change? And how did it bring you more satisfaction or maybe even less satisfaction? We all might have regrets along the way, and we need to be brutally honest with ourselves. We need to assess what our current trajectory is. And if something isn't sitting well with us, we need to acknowledge that. We need to be honest with ourselves. And, you know, the things we do as clinicians or non-clinicians, 
they can seem exciting at the time when we first get into them, or they can seem boring and then become exciting, or the thing we used to love that really lit us up can eventually become loathsome or become stressful. You know, back in the day when I did hospice in the late 90s and early 2000s, a lot of hospices were still little mom and pop shops. I even worked in an outpatient hospice that was a home. It was an actual house. And we had, I think, five bedrooms so we could have five patients at a time. And we had a central kitchen and patients would come out into the living room if they were able and their families would come and hang out. And, you know, it was a pretty lovely thing. We would have local musicians come in. It was a pretty special environment. And then when I worked in regular hospice, going to people's homes where they were living with their families or by themselves, that also could be a very intimate experience. And home health was also quite intimate at times. And you really got to go into someone's castle and really feel that you were making a difference. And Specifically with hospice, what I've heard from a lot of hospice nurses in the course of, I'd say the last 10 to 15 years, so since about 2005, 2010, hospice has become very corporatized. So a lot of people who used to love hospice don't necessarily love it anymore because large corporations have eaten up the hospices because it's become big business. And what used to be this loving, highly spiritual, beautiful work that people used to do doesn't feel quite that way anymore because it's a really top-down hierarchical industry that's just that. It's an industry. It no longer feels as much like a way of life. And a lot of people have become disenchanted with hospice, for instance, and some even with home health. And obviously, there's probably many of you listening right now who are disenchanted with hospital nursing because that corporatization has also been very disconcerting and off-putting. And when you're evaluating the choices you've made, the things that, cha that have changed, think about what else has changed. Did you have a child or two along the way? Did you get married? Did you get divorced? Did you get married and divorced several times? Did your husband or loved one become disabled or die since you became a nurse? Or what age-related changes are happening for you? How do you need to change your career because you are also changing even just because of your ability or relative ability to work on your feet all day or whatever else is going on for you? So you may find that it's the circumstances of your personal life that are impacting your work more than anything else. You know, several babies born over the period of a few short years can change how you feel about getting into work every day, or a divorce can totally throw you off your game. And this is where a little self-compassion can go a long way. And no matter where things went off course, where no matter where things started to not feel quite right, you can get back on target when you're ready to do the work to get there. Now, when we come back from the break, I want to talk a little bit about getting back on target, getting back on course, and wrap this conversation up so that you can do some self-evaluation and move into the next iteration of your career. So we'll be right back for the second half of episode 296 of The Nurse Keith Show. So now we're going to take a pause for the cause for just a moment. Please consider becoming a patron of The Nurse Keith Show, just like other awesome listeners who value the show so much that they want to give just a little bit each month to support the work we're doing here. When you pledge, you not only get the satisfaction of helping produce and support The Nurse Keith Show, you also get some pretty cool premiums and gifts from yours truly. Just head over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith to read all about it. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith. 
And if you know someone who could benefit from career coaching with me, please consider referring them. And if they become a paying client, you'll receive credit for an hour of coaching with me. And there's no expiration date on that credit. So you can keep it in your back pocket until you need it most. And remember that you can refer as many people as you like and continue to earn those coaching credits. What an incredible deal. And please head over to nursekeith.com and sign up for my newsletter, which comes out regularly and brings you supportive messages, updates from my blog and my podcast, resources, and all sorts of other stuff. Remember, nursekeith.com, sign up for that newsletter, and you'll also get a free download from me as my gift to you. Anyway, those are my sincere asks today. So now, Let's dig back into today's topic without further ado. Hey, well, thanks for hanging out here with me, Nurse Keith, here on The Nurse Keith Show. And we're at episode 296. And prior to the break, I was talking about the things that can make us feel that we've lost our mojo, that things aren't quite right, that our lives have changed, our health has changed, our bodies have changed, our circumstances, all sorts of things can cause us to feel like we're off course, off track, or that our career has happened to us and we haven't really been making our career happen. And this is all about getting back on track so that we can feel like we're making our career happen. Now, back in 2017, I wrote an article about your nursing career mitochondria. Remember those mitochondria? They're those little adenosine triphosphate ATP factories in every cell of your body. And those mitochondria work mightily hard to keep your body going. And if you're no longer resonating with what's going on in your career, you've lost your mojo this might mean going back to revisit the original driving force behind why you became a nurse in the first place, your original motivations. What was the ATP that really was produced by your mitochondria? Or even going further than that, what was the fuel that fed your cells that helped your mitochondria to create the ATP that powered your career? So you can ask yourself some questions. These are somewhat similar to the ones that I asked in the first half, but slightly different too. Ask yourself, are my original motivations for becoming a nurse still equally powerful for me now as they were back then? Ask yourself, in terms of my nursing mojo, is it still there? Have I lost my mojo? Or is it just a little blunted? Do I need to get out the tools to sharpen it once again? When I first became a nurse, my greatest satisfaction came from blank. Again, when I first became a nurse, my greatest satisfaction came from blank. And at this point in my career, my greatest satisfaction comes from blank. You can also ask this about your life in general, your personal life. 10 years ago, my greatest satisfaction in life came from fill in the blank, maybe raising children, maybe building a new house. And at this point in my life, my greatest satisfaction comes from fill in the blank. Ask this question, if I feel the need for something new to reinvigorate my career mitochondria, do I believe that this new thing will have something to do with nursing? (gasps) You may be gasping, but I have worked with some clients along the way who actually made the decision that they actually needed to leave nursing. Maybe not healthcare, but maybe they needed to leave nursing. They might've kept their license, but maybe they became a, um, let's see, maybe they were a operating room nurse, maybe they were a scrub nurse, and they decided they were going to work for a company that made new surgical equipment, and they were going to go around as a salesperson or trainer for that company, 
going to hospitals, training the nurses or surgeons how to use this particular new surgical table or something. So sometimes we can move into a slightly non-clinical area that still taps our expertise that we've honed over the years. Sometimes we need to jump out of healthcare altogether. I've known and worked with and been friends with people who left a nursing career to open a store or open a restaurant or start a completely different business. So we need to acknowledge that sometimes we actually need to jump ship completely. You can ask yourself, if I realize that my new career mitochondria can most readily be found outside of nursing, am I willing to reconcile myself with that fact and pursue that path? And I also want you to sincerely answer this question. On a scale of one to 10, and we nurses really love one to 10 scales, don't we? My career satisfaction is currently a blank. And I just asked a client this the other day. She's a young nurse who has only been in the profession for three or four years, but has worked really hard and is feeling kind of crispy doing what she's been doing. And I asked her, on a scale of one to 10, what's your level of dissatisfaction and unhappiness in your current workplace? And she told me it was an eight. And I said, okay, we've got some work to do. We have got to get you out of there because it turns out that that particular workplace was pretty unhealthy and toxic. And sure, she could try to change what was going on around her, but I could see that it was really tearing her up and she actually needed to just get the heck out of there and find a new job. And that's what we're working on doing right now. Now, you can also ask yourself at this time in your life, what success really means to you? Does your definition of success mean getting your master's in nursing by the time you turn 40, studying for your PhD like my friend Caroline, or getting your DNP because that's what you really want to do? There's plenty of people out there who love going to school. There's plenty of people out there who have multiple degrees. You know who you are. For me, getting a master's degree still doesn't make sense. And while some people might think, wow, Keith, you know, for the position you hold and the people you help, you know, the, there might be a lot of credibility and learning and marketability coming from a master's, but I just don't see it yet. But for you, your Everest right now, your success might mean getting your BSN and finding a job at a magnet hospital that's going to pay your bills and maybe help you get your kid through college. For you, Maybe your definition of success means saving up enough money so you can take a year off, buy a round the world ticket, and travel around the globe when this pandemic is over. And why not? When the pandemic is over, or if you're listening to this well after the COVID-19 pandemic, maybe traveling around the world sounds like a pretty good job in these days of multiple existential threats against our very, <laughs> very ability to survive on the planet. There are a lot of prescriptions out there for creating a successful nursing and healthcare career, but cookie cutter solutions and what people tell you you should do aren't approximations of what you need. They need to be custom made for you because if you want your career to be created, if you want to create it and not have it happen to you, you don't necessarily, as Jane the nurse, want what Bill the nurse wants. And Jane and Bill come from different histories. They have different goals. They have different professional experiences under their belt, and they have different personal and family circumstances and responsibilities. So Jane and Bill each need to forge an individualized path forward. They need to make their career, and not just the career, they need to make their life happen. So when you're going off on a hike into the woods, a lot of hikers use a compass, whether an old fashioned compass, which I don't think a lot of people use anymore, but some do, or maybe you have a compass on your iPhone, you have an app. 
And that helps you to keep from getting lost. And you probably bring a map with you too, especially if you don't have any service out there in the mountains, right? So all compasses universally point out where magnetic north is, right? And from there, you can figure out where southeast, west are and all that kind of things. And a hiker uses those cardinal directions in concert with, let's say, a topographic map in order to make good decisions about where they're heading. But there is no real true north for every single nurse. One nurse's true north is dead wrong for the other, like Jane and Bill, for instance. So your expedition on in your career isn't going to look like everybody else's. And for those of us who are iconoclasts, who are rebels, who are black sheep, that's me raising my hand, we can actually sometimes, well, turn around and march in a completely different direction than everybody else. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that puts us in jeopardy, but we all have to make those decisions. So it's your responsibility to find out what your compass is. What's your true north? What's your Everest? And then to mix metaphors, which as if you listen to the show, you know I like to do, you solicit the drummer who's going to play the beat that moves your feet towards your personal definition of success. So if you're on this exploratory path, you're like, Keith, yeah, I really want to make my nursing career happen. I really want to be a better educator. I want to be a better clinical social worker or psychologist. Ask yourself, what are my greatest strengths? What do I bring to the table? What really are the areas where I shine? And then ask yourself, what are my weaknesses? Where do I need to bolster my knowledge? What are my growth edges? Where are the places where I feel like I'm falling short or falling down? What are the pieces of information, knowledge, expertise, or even task-based skill, manual skill? that I need to develop. And then ask yourself, what are the opportunities out there that are just waiting for me to seize them? Maybe I've been wanting to start a business and I see a perfect opportunity for a business right now. Speaking of opportunities, I just had an idea for a business the other day. There are lots of nurses out there becoming cannabis nurses. They're starting to educate the public and be consultants about medical cannabis and CBD, et cetera. And I just learned that, here's an opportunity for you. I just learned that a lot of colleges and universities of nursing are not teaching their students about medical cannabis, the endocannabinoid system, et cetera. And you know what? The American Association of Colleges of Nursing or whatever that organization is called, they've mandated that these types of questions are going to be written into the NCLEX. So maybe you could start a consulting practice, becoming a cannabis nurse and become a consultant to nursing schools who need to learn how to educate their students about the endocannabinoid system, cannabidiols, medical marijuana, the uses of CBD, etc. So anyway, there's an idea for you. Well, now, where were we? I digress. Okay, so we talked about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. You know where I'm going here. This is a SWOT analysis. We talk next about the potential threats against our success and happiness. Do I lack motivation? Am I going through a difficult time in my life? Do I have medical or mental health issues that are impacting me negatively in my work or at home? Is a lot of my energy being taken up right now because I'm a member of the sandwich generation and I have school-aged children and elderly parents at the same time? Maybe that's me. So that could be a threat. A threat could also be that there's a pandemic going on and it's a scary world out there. So doing a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats of any part of your life, your career, your marriage, anything can help you make some decisions and elucidate what it is that's going on. Think about who you know who might be a good networking connection, somebody to talk to, a mentor, a faith leader, uh, your therapist, your counselor, your best friend, your colleague, your former professor. And what are your past experiences that are pointing towards 
a new opportunity coming to you in the future. So when you examine your career, whatever it is, is it a flowing river of possibility and growth? Or is it a dry riverbed that's hungry for the moisture of your curiosity? The flow of your career in your life is a perpetual movement if you allow it to be. And again, this takes watering, feeding, and composting. You have to consistently guard against the burnout and the negative things that happen that can help you to lose or force you to lose your ambition and motivation and feed the parts that need to grow, that need to expand. So at different times, we're flowing like a river, we're sitting still like a deep cold lake and looking inside of ourselves, or we feel big and expansive like the ocean. And that expansiveness, that way of thinking on the bigger, higher level can be where the ideas flow. And at these times, this can be where you reach out to those people who might be able to open your mind. This is where you do informational interviews. This is where you network on LinkedIn. This is where you contact old friends and colleagues and say, hey, what are you up to these days? What's new? And at these moments of potential expansion, this is where we pull the camera back. I know a lot of metaphors in this episode as usual. Pull the camera back, get the bird's eye view, see the forest for the trees and say, oh, that's where things went awry. That's where things need to change. That's why I feel stuck right now. Or that's why I feel so great. And I see doors propped open all around me. Or I feel terrible because doors are closing and I need to stick my foot in them. So wherever we happen to be, wherever our flow is, for us, that's the place where we are. And then we need to make the determination that something needs to change, that we need to take inspired action and make this next portion of our lives or careers happen. Well, there you have it. You have spent another 30, 40 minutes with Nurse Keith listening to one of my solo diatribes in the show notes with some links to some of those popular blog posts at Digital Doorway will be at nursekeith.com forward slash the word episode and the number 296. I hope you feel uplifted and empowered from this episode. I hope you've identified something you might be able to do in order to move things forward in your life or your career. Remember to contact me, mention the show, get 10% off your first coaching package if you feel that would be helpful to you at this time. The other thing you can do is head over to nursekeith.com to the resources drop-down menu for jobs from Reload, Trusted Health, Incredible Health, and ZipRecruiter, resume templates from Amanda Guarnier at the Resume Rx, and a whole lot more. And also, if you would give a rating review over at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts, that helps other people find the show. The Nurse Keith Show is a member of Ars Longa Media, a collaborative network of podcasts and media entities dedicated to professional education and partnering to improve social ills. They're at arslonga.media, A-R-S-L-O-N-G-A dot media. The Nurse Keith Show is also a proud member of the Health Podcast Network, one of the largest and fastest growing collections of authoritative, high quality podcasts taking on the tough topics in healthcare with empathy, expertise, and a commitment to excellence. I am so humbled to sit in that, or do I sit, do I stand, or hang out in that podcast network with Sanjay Gupta, his CNN coronavirus podcast, the Mayo Clinic, the New England Journal of Medicine, the Journal of the American Medical Association, Penn Nursing, and many other awesome podcasts. The Nurse Keith Show is adroitly produced by Rob Johnston of 520R Podcasting. Thank you, Rob. And Mark Cappy Spiesen is our stalwart social media ringmaster. Hats off to both of you. Thanks for helping keep the wheels turning in the right direction. Be well, dig deep, seek joy, keep in touch. This is Nurse Keith saying adios till next time from Chile, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Catch you on the flip side.